What's up, y'all? My name's Dan. This is Dream Sequence, my first Norn script I'll be debuting today. I'd like to give you a little demo, improvise something, see what happens, and then I'll talk about the theory behind it and show you what you need to know to get started with it yourself. Dream Sequence is a sequencer, arpeggiator, and harmonizer. It does require grid, and optionally, you can use Crow to interface with your Eurorack setup. Highly recommend that. Um, we can also do MIDI in and out. Let's get started by improvising a little bit of a jam.
sorry. Thanks for indulging me with that. Uh, hopefully it gave you a feel for what it's like to use Dream Sequence. Um, Dream Sequence is based on a couple of teletype scripts that I made, so it may look familiar, especially the, the grid portion. Uh, those are Menem and Subsequence, which uh, you can find on my GitHub. Uh, if you have teletype, they're a lot of fun too. They actually have some stuff that we can't do because of Crow's limited uh, input and output. Quick note about navigating on Norns. I don't use a K1 or E1. E2 will uh, select a menu option at the very top. It will highlight and you can use E3 to scan through the five top level menus or just select a sub item and change its value with E3. K2 is used to play or pause. Pause is uh, synchronized with the beat. And uh, K3 is used to reset the sequence and kind of resynchronize the starting point of the chord and ARP. So when we boot up, you're going to get dropped in the chord grid, this guy here. And uh, playback happens from top to bottom. Each column refers to a chord degree, one through seven, and then one octave up, one through seven. Uh, I'm not a big music theory guy, so I really like using chord degrees because we can see on this readout here in C major, your first degree is C major. Uh, D minor is the second, third is E minor, F major. If we change that mode to, uh, I'll do Dorian, then we're gonna have a C minor instead. D minor, D sharp major, F major. So you can just punch in a pattern, uh, see how that sounds. flip it back to major now you've seen this readout here this is the active chord and that active chord is going to get passed to the arpeggiator and the harmonizer so it's really important to know that there's always going to be an active chord even if playback is disabled so um, I'll explain how that works in just a second um, first of all, though, I do want to, want to mention we have four different chord patterns. We're on A, B, C, and D. Uh, so how that works is I could uh, double tap here to directly jump to that chord pattern. And um, I don't know, let's just do it in reverse. So if I play the uh, pattern, you'll see the readout here indicates we're on pattern B, step two, three, four, and I can cue up a change back to the pattern A. And it works a little bit like the session view in Ableton. You can just sort of cue things up and, you know, see what sounds good. Later, we will automate switching between these using the arranger. Another function that's uh, nice to know is uh, if you hold down the chord grid uh, button, the switcher, it will let you know that encoder two can be used to rotate uh, barber pole style. Uh, between the looped portion and uh, you can also sort of transpose or shift the chord degrees up and down. Um, this is chord loop length. You can go up to eight steps. We'll eventually have more of those, but that's all you get for now. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to take us into the ARP grid. We're going to do a very short uh, loop, just one, one segment. So how this works is uh, playback again from top to bottom. The first column is the, uh, the root note of the uh, of the active chord second note third note so this would be like a c e g because our active chord is a c major and then um well, let me show you how that sounds so we just wrapped around to c one octave up um, even if i take this chord and, and just turn off the playback send it to no destination we still get this arpeggio going based on that active chord it's also an option here in the ARP section to change the chord type from a triad to a seventh, which means that instead of wrapping around uh, here, we, we don't just have three notes, we have four notes, which is a seventh, and then it's gonna wrap around on the fifth. All right, so I've punched in uh, an arpeggio. We just wanted to show you that we have those same um, options for uh, like transposing the sequence. It also wraps, I think, yeah. And uh, doing that barber pole sort of uh, shifting. Uh, something I didn't mention is there's also a little uh, note here. K3, while holding on this button, will do uh, a generative algorithm for ARP. 
It randomizes a few things like um, I think your step length and duration maybe. Uh, octave, it definitely does. Note that we're in a one-shot mode here, so instead of it looping through continually, you can have it do it once per uh, chord pattern. Same thing works on the chord grid, by the way. If we go back there, we can just generate all new chords. I'm just doing that quite a bit in our demo. There's like three chord algorithms and I don't know how many uh, ARP algorithms. None of them are great, but they will eventually be good, I hope. I'll keep working on them. <laughs> okay, let's talk about one of my favorite parts of Dream Sequence, which is uh, the CV and MIDI harmonizers. So similar to how, um, how the arpeggiator works, we're just plucking notes from the active chord and playing those back. But instead of uh, choosing those on grid using columns, we're going to use a uh, voltage sent into Crow to select which note to use. So if I have a, a trigger being sent in with no voltage and a C major active chord, it's just like uh, choosing uh, this first column, you know, punching in eighth notes there. If I go up to uh, 1 12th of a volt, we get that uh, second note, the E, then G. And since we're using a seventh chord type here in the harmonizer, it goes to that, uh, that B. We can also do triads. So a lot of fun to just uh, send, you know, random voltage sources, uh, LFO, uh, function generators, whatever you have in here. Another little feature here that I'm still kind of tickled by is this auto rest feature. Uh, this kills me that something as awesome as marbles doesn't have the ability to do rests. So if we turn this on, any duplicate notes get suppressed. It only uh, plays the first note uh, in each, uh, each chord step. So this is kind of cool because we can turn something See if we can get some duplicates, duplicates going intentionally. That's actually not going to be a very good one. Okay, so we have those two repeated notes in that, that phrase. Super useful to have. Next up is the MIDI harmonizer, very similar to the CV harmonizer, except that it takes an incoming MIDI note on message and uses that to select notes from the active chord. So if I have a C major chord here, uh, this is my little, this is my MIDI controller here, I guess, today. Our first three notes, up an octave. Now this is a little bit of a trip if you have a sequence going because you can just sort of uh, you can just sort of keyboard cat around all this. It makes you sound like you know what you're doing. And finally, let's talk about the arranger. So instead of queuing up these uh, chord pattern changes manually, we can come into the arranger where the first top four rows correspond to patterns A, B, C, and D. So we could say play A twice, B twice. D twice. To turn the arranger on, you press this button at the bottom left, and you'll be able to see it's on in Norns uh, by this brightly illuminated uh, little mini dashboard here at the bottom right. This, uh, this key here will change it to one-shot mode, which means it stops at the end, or looping mode, which means it will just continue uh, looping through. The length of the arrangement is just wherever you press the last button, and it will intelligently fill in, uh, letting you know that it's going to sustain uh, a pattern, so we can, um, you know, make these kind of big changes. I like to do the, the two, the two pinky thing. Uh, so you can just punch those in without having to go through every single one. The length is uh, 16 segments right now. I will be extending that eventually, but um, 16 is good enough for me. So it's gonna have to be good enough for you. So let's say you uh, you make a mistake, and you know you'd intended to have these be in like, you know, four four segment chunks, but you have an extra one. If you hold this little timeline indicator here, it activates some extra functions. You see encoder three will shift the pattern so we can shift it left. You can actually like totally wipe out things here uh, or extend them. Uh, hopefully makes sense there. I mean, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can. 
And lastly, we have events. Very powerful, very crunchy. I'm kind of scared of them myself, but well worth checking out. If you hold one of these uh, segment keys down, uh, we can enter the event editor with K3. These first rows are highlighted because there are four rows. That's the loop length of pattern A right now. And there are 16 slots for each one of those steps, which means a playback of the events happens from left to right, top to bottom. And an event is, uh, is a way to set or increment a value for just about any menu option. And there are also functions that we can call. So let's enter one right here. You'll see there are some categories here. These correspond to the standard menu uh, kind of high level options. In global though, we have some extra stuff like a crow trigger. We can send that out from crow to euro rack and maybe fire a switch or sample and hold. We can generate chords, arpeggio, both of them. We can change the, uh, the algorithms that are used. We can do uh, mode key changes, uh, tempo ramps. Let me use tempo ramp. That's one we did in the um, in the demo at the beginning. So I'm going to increment this by five beats per minute. You know, the other option is just you can just set it, like you know, set it to sixty beats per minute at this one spot in the composition. But let's do five there. Ah, fuck it. Let's do let's do ten. Save that. We can copy and paste these events. So every single step, we're going to go up ten beats per minute. Should be pretty pretty dramatic. Um, save that. Tempo is 120 right now. Let's come in here. And on this next step, let's do a decrement here of 10. Save that. Notice how it's not highlighting any because there's no step uh, or no, no pattern assigned to this segment yet. That's fine. And so it'll go back down now. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. Hopefully that gives you what you need. I do want to note that um, for this version of Dream Sequence, you need to be running on Norn's version 2.7.6 or later, uh, but you'll need to be running on an older version of Crow 3.0.1. As of 402, uh, there are some issues there. Uh, a lot of documentation online on uh, my github so reference that if there are questions that you still have please let me know send me your bug reports i have a lot more features coming uh, so keep an eye out for more videos until next time y'all let's do a little little tickling of the ivories here oh, so good i've always wanted